This is Joseph Trust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, why does surface noise look different after it's applied? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I have a simple object here loaded in. So this was just a sphere object that I've cut the bottom and the top off, and then I've just closed the holes on each of those areas. So the question is asking about surface noise. Now surface noise lives underneath the tool palette over here, and there's this surface noise area that I can just open up. And in here you have various options to change how the surface noise will be applied to your mesh. As an example of what surface noise is, if you come over here and just simply click this light box to noise maker button, this is going to open up light box and it's going to take you to the noise directory. In here you have a bunch of surface noise presets you can apply to your model. So I'm just going to come over here and click this noise 03 one and just double click. And when you double click that, it's going to apply the surface noise to your mesh. So after I have that applied and come over here and click hide to hide light box, and you're going to notice your model is now going to have this effect applied to it. I'm just going to come over here quick and just change my material color back to white. Now after you have a noise active on your model, you can come over here and start editing it. So I come over here and click edit. And in here, you'll now get a preview of your model in a separate window here inside of NoiseMaker. In here, you have a bunch of sliders and various options you can change. So if I want the noise to use the UVs of the mesh instead of the 3D noise, and come over here and click UV. And now it's going to use the UV coordinates that may be on the model. I can change the strength on this so I can see this noise being affected a little bit stronger on the surface of my mesh here. I can change the scale to determine how this noise will be applied. And you have other various options you can change and modify. So after you're happy with the noise options you've changed over here, you just come down to the bottom and hit OK. And then you should now get your noise into ZBrush as a preview on your model. So the question is asking about why does the surface noise look different after it's applied? So the first thing to take note of is that the noise is being applied as a preview across your mesh right now. So it's not really applied to your model. And it's being applied as basically a 2D bump map. So as you can see, the edges of this mesh here are still reflecting that very smooth sphere. So if I come over here and turn the noise off and then turn it back on, you can see that the silhouette has not changed. So the first thing when you click this apply to mesh, it's going to take your noise and it's going to turn it into real geometry. So it's going to take the noise you have applied on your model and it's going to convert it to 3D geometry. So right now it's being displayed as 2D, so you're definitely going to have a disconnect from the 2D version of your mesh to the 3D version. Now another thing, when you come and click apply to mesh, the noise is going to need enough topology on your model to handle the details that's in it. So right now this mesh has 7,000 polys. So if I come over here and click apply to mesh, I'm going to end up with this result. So I didn't have enough topology on my mesh to handle that surface noise. So now I get a large disconnect between what I was getting in the preview of the noise to what is actually being applied to the mesh. So a thing you want to make sure you have even before you do this apply to mesh is that you have enough topology on your surface. So I'm just going to undo this quick here and I'm going to go to my geometry palette here. And I'm just going to take this model up to around five subdivisions. So now I'm at 1.8 million polygons. So now if I come back down here to the surface tab and now click apply to noise, you're going to see it's going to process that noise and give me the 3D output on that as real geometry. So as you can see, the edge here has now been affected. So it's no longer this nice smooth transition. But when you apply this noise, it's now applying that noise as a 3D result across the surface. And you can see I had enough topology this time to generate that noise on the model. So now I'm getting this result. So the noise first off is just being generated as a preview. So you're going to get a disconnect from the 2D version of it to the 3D version as the result. And then you also want to make sure you have enough topology to support that noise. Now one thing you can also do inside of ZBrush before you click this apply to mesh is you can preview what the noise is going to look like by just rendering it with BPR. So if I come up here and simply click BPR, it's going to render this. So we're not applying this to the mesh, but we're just rendering the model. And this BPR render will look at the surface noise and it's going to apply it in the rendered version. So you can see now I'm getting the 3D version of the model in this render stage. So what you can do is you can come over here and start editing your noise. Let's say I can come through and just change these sliders like so, and then I can hit OK. And then instead of clicking apply to mesh to fully lock in that change, I can just render with BPR again to see what the end result would look like. 
So this BPR render is going to give you a preview of what your mesh would look like after you click apply to mesh. So if this is too strong, I can go back to edit and then I can change the strength. I can even make it inverted and then hit okay again. And now render with BPR again to see what that's going to look like before I apply it to my model. So now we have a result like this. So just remember that the surface noise is being applied as a preview until it is applied to the mesh or rendered with BPR. If you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.